Uh, uh, what'd you say? They said that uh, sewage's folly. Yeah, well, I was right. Fuck them. Thank you, Mr. Seward. Thanks for joining us this week. I know it. Uh, you've come a long way from the great beyond to join us. And I think you're a good person to be featured in this week's newsletter because you are a very important person. A lot of people don't even know who you are because a lot of people are too lazy to study history. But you did a lot of good things. And um, yeah, I'm glad you're here. So let me just get right into this. So market principles, right? These are principles of all financial markets, whether they're bond market, stock market, crypto market. I'm going to usually refer to stocks, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's kind of my default because I was mostly a stock trader. I started my career working, well, my real trading career with Mario Gabelli. He hired me out of business school when I was at NYU, and I uh, traded directly for him. Then I, after a couple of years, I jumped over and traded directly for Steve Cohen at SAC Capital. And he's like, you know, Mario is a, a value investor, a long-term buy and hold investor, and Steve is a trader. So I was fortunate in that I was able to work for two of the best in the history of the industry. From there, I was the head of trading at three different institutional money managers. I've overseen pretty much every kind of strategy you can think of, including hedge funds. And uh, I was a market maker. So I got a pretty extensive background in trading. There's not too much I haven't seen. And one of the things that I have seen is that people tend to overcomplicate it, right? We just really need to know where the important price levels are, what the trend is, what the momentum is, and understand investment psychology. So certain price levels are more important than others. And when a market reaches an important level, it tends to make a big move one way or the other. These are called support and resistance levels. And these levels can retain, remain intact for a long time, uh, months, even years. This is called market memory. Support is a level where there's more demand or buy orders than there are is supply or sell orders. So when a market's trending lower, it's because there's not enough demand or buy orders to absorb all the supply. So it goes lower. The sellers have to offer their shares out at a discount. When we get to a support level, the tide turns. There's enough demand there to absorb all of the supply. So this, the market stops going lower. Resistance is the opposite. When a market's trending higher, it's because there's not enough supply to fill all of the demand. So the buyers need to be willing to pay a premium that forces an uptrend. When we get to resistance, there's enough supply to fill all the demand. Now we'll see that levels where resistance can become support and levels that were support can become resistance. And in my career, the best traders that I've seen follow these simple principles and that's why they've done so well. So here's our S and P 500. This is where we usually start. We can see here, this is an example of market memory resistance at 410 and we got through it now we're coming back and we're going to retest it and a lot of times in a market resistance can turn into support and we could see that down here resistance became support this happens because people who sold regret doing so and a lot of them decide to buy their shares back when the price goes higher so if there's enough remorseful sellers placing buy orders at their sell price the level that was resistance can convert into support so we're going to see if that happens right here. My suspicion is it won't and that this 410 level will break and uh, we're going to go lower. I think those Facebook numbers weren't nearly as good as people think. I mean, they missed their earnings. Their net income was down like 50%. So the catalyst for the move was that they are, uh, that they are uh, cutting expenses. Well, when do companies cut expenses when things aren't going well? All right, so Mr. Seward wants to come on and say something else here. Give us a little bit of uh, his life. Stage is yours, sir. Well, I see Professor Marcus found an absolutely dashing picture of me. Yes, I was a very handsome man back in the day. Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. I am William Seward. I was President Lincoln's Secretary of State, and many historians consider me to be the best Secretary of State ever. A lot better than this guy you have down below. Some say that I was a strange person. I once said I am an enigma even to myself. And Henry Adams said that I could charm a cow into statesmanship. 
Not exactly sure how he kind of charms cows, but I don't want to know. And by the way, there's a doubt, no doubt, that I'm better than blinking down here. He's smiling while people are dying, and it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's a strange, strange place we live in. Strange times. All righty. Now, here we take a look at our technology sector, and we can see it here. Resistance became support, and we'll have to see the same thing. It's very overbought. Overbought conditions tend to draw sellers into a market. Most of the time, a stock trades in its historical or typical trading range. If it gets above that, we call that overbought. And that is important because traders will be respect expecting a reversion to the mean, in this case, a move lower. So again, we'll have to see, will this resi resistance become support? If it does, that could build us a base for the, a new uptrend. If not, we could have a quick sell-off. Markets sell off faster than they go up. And that's because selling comes from fear and buying comes from hope. And fear is a stronger emotion than hope. Here is our healthcare sector. All right. And by the way, I should say uh, it's if you want to get an idea of where the S&P 500 is going, it's a good idea to look at the different sectors. If you want to get an idea of where the sector is going, it's a good idea to look at the stocks in the sectors. And that's one thing that we cover at Stock Market Jobber. But you can see here. Support was support. This is market memory. Resistance was resistance. Here we have the conversion of resistance to support, and it seems as though this support is breaking. This is our healthcare sector. This is the second biggest sector. I'm going in order here of how big the sectors are. Financial sector, testing resistance around 3650. So if healthcare keeps going lower, financials can't get through this resistance and roll over, that's going to bring the S&P back down through that 410 level. And I'm going to bring Mr. Seward on again for some quick comments. If I have done nothing else worthy of self-congratulation, I deem this treaty worthy to have lived for. I said this after the United States signed a treaty with Britain that allowed mutual searches of ships for each other's ships, and it was done to help us end the slave trade. Here is our industrial sector. Uh, we can see that there was resistance up around 102.50. There's support around 97. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, all right. Uh, Mr. Sewer wants to come on again. The stage is yours, sir. I was born in 1801 in a village of Florida in Orange County, New York. My father was a farmer and owned slaves. This exposed me to the evils of that institution, and I could not stand it. I abhorred slavery. I was educated as a lawyer and moved to central New York town of Auburn. Then I was elected to the New York State Senate in 1830 as an anti-Mason. Four years later, I became the gubernatorial nominee for the Whig Party. Though I was not successful in that race, I was elected governor in 1838 and won a second two-year term in 1840. During this period, I signed several laws that advanced the rights and opportunities for black residents, as well as guaranteed jury trials for fugitive slaves and states. The legislation protected abolitionists, and I used my position to intervene in the cases of freed black people who were enslaved in the South. Okay, now here we have our communication services sector. This red line is what we call a Bollinger Band. This is two standard deviations above the 20-day moving average. Now, why is that important? Well. 95% of all trading should take place within two standard deviations of the mean. If we get above that, that illustrates overbought conditions, and this is going to draw sellers into the market. We can see we got above it here, and look what happened. A sell-off followed. Got above it here, and a sell-off followed. Here we can see a couple different things. This is our consumer staples sector. 
resistance converted into support. Remember, seller's remorse. People sell. The price goes higher. A lot of the sellers say, I made a mistake. I want to buy my shares back. But I'm only going to do it if I can get them for the same price I sold them at. So they place their buy orders at the same level they sold at. If there's enough of these buy orders being placed by remorseful sellers, the level that was resistance converts into support. Here we have the opposite. You can see it here too. Support becomes resistance. This is because of buyer's remorse. When we look at a chart, we're looking at psychology. It's not just tea leaves or astrology. Uh, we are looking at an illustration of mass psychology. So we have people who bought here, the price falls below it. A lot of these people regret doing so. They tell themselves they want out, but they don't want to lose money. So they place their they place their sell order at the same level they bought at, just like here. We bought out here and we tried to sell here. So support converts into resistance. This energy sector shows very clear as examples of the things I'm talking about here. Resistance can become support. Support can become resistance. Resistance can stay intact for a while. So the point here is that we need to know where these important levels are. For some reason, so some price levels are more important than others. And some, sometimes we know why and sometimes we don't. But we don't need to. But knowing where these levels are is one of the main keys for success in trading because when we get to an important level, we tend to make a big move. They're like a fork in the road, kind of. All right, I'm going to bring on Mr. Seward one more time here, or maybe two more times. We'll see. So I carefully cultivated a madman's image to make other nations think that I was reckless. Because who isn't afraid of a crazy madman in charge of a whole giant country? This is our utility sector. And once again, we could see resistance converted into support. So support around 69 turned into resistance. Then it turned back into support. We have resistance here, support here. And look where we found a bottom on Friday, right at this former resistance and support level. So why is the level not 68? Why is 69 important and 67.25 important? That I don't know, but we don't need to know, right? I mean, we don't need to know why these levels are important. We just need to know where they are. And up here we can see resistance up around this level. The best traders don't overthink things. And in the institutional world, people don't use silly things like Gandhari and Fibonacci retracements and Elliott Wave. This is what people in the institutional trader world focus on is what are the levels? What are the trends? What is the momentum? This uh, materials ETF sh shows this very clearly. A lot of the things here. I mean, I don't have a lineup here, but we can see there's clear resistance around 91. We can see support, support. So this goes back to 2021. This is almost two years. Support turns into resistance, became support again. Now we're retesting this resistance at 84. If we see a level, if we see a sector that looks like it's about to break out, then we can look within the sector for trading ideas. Or if we see a sector that's about to break down. If materials start to break out, we can look at the stocks that are in this sector and look for something that looks like it's going to break out the most. What we're looking at here is really just an aggregate of all the stocks in the sector. So just by definition, there's going to be things that act more, uh, that make bigger moves and things that make smaller moves. But that's one of the things we do at the stock market job is delve into the sectors to look for trading ideas when it looks like the sector is going to make a move. Here is our real estate sector, and we can see once again, resistance has converted into support. All right, I think I'm going to bring on Mr. Seward one more time. Thank you, sir. The stage is yours.
See, I knew how important Alaska was and how it would be future of the United States. It was rich with resources and a buffer against Japan and, and Russia. I thought they would become our adversaries in the future, and obviously I was right. The purchase added 586,412 square miles of new territory to the United States at the cost of $7.2 million in 1867. In modern terms, the cost is equivalent to $140 million in 1921 dollars. That's only 39 cents per acre. Folly. Folly my ass. What I bought was the whole entire state of Alaska, and it made America great. Made America great then, and it will be great again. And did you know that the Japanese invaded Alaska during the World War II? Yes, the Andalusian Islands. You can actually look them up on Google Earth and you can see the remnants of the battle that took place there. And over 2,000 people died during the only time that the Japanese ever laid foot on American soil. Just a little tidbit of history for you because that's what we do at StockMarketJobber.com. We love history. Alrighty, so here's me, Professor Mark.